Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be making a fast API from scratch. And this is the second video of the series, so make sure you watch the previous videos where we have made our model. Now, this fast API is super fast Python web framework. There are other frameworks like Flask, Django, but fast API is very modern and it has feature of asynchronous programming, which is still lacking in other frameworks. And this we have already discussed in our introduction video. As we move ahead, we'll come across various features. So without wasting much time, let's start our video. So in this video, we'll see how to write an API from scratch. So here I'm in my root directory of my project. And now what I'll do is activate my environment. Now after activating the environment, I'll need two packages for writing the fast API. Install fast API and uvcon, uvcon. And as you can see, they are getting installed and we'll just wait. Now, once it is installed, you have to go and open your favorite text editor. So I usually use VS code and now I'll open it. So it is opened. I'll name this, uh, the API I'm building as app and with the extension of Python app.py. Okay. So writing before writing an API, we need to see that we are working on the same interpreter. So I'll activate the interpreter myself for diabetes. Okay. Once I have activated my interpreter for the same virtual environment, what I'll do is import the packages. So from fast, fast API, I'll be importing fast API. Then the second package we had installed was uvcon. So I'll also import that. Okay. So, after importing these two packages, now what we'll do is write a basic API. Okay. So I'll make an instance of this. I've created the instance of fast API and I'll make a basic API right now. So app, I'll use decorator. I'll just show why we use decorator and this will work on my root page of the API. And now we have created a basic API, which basically says is if you go on root page of an API, you'll see a JSON object written in hello world. So what does decorator do is it wraps the function around itself. As you can see here, I'll, I'm wrapping the greet function with get method. So now we'll see how our code works. So for this, I'll write a simple if statement. If I'll tell my uvcon to run my application and I've specified it as app. So I'll uh, pass in that as a parameter. So what this code makes sure that it tells Python interpreter that it is an entry point of the program. Okay. Now let's see how we can start our server. Now to start our server, we just have to write uvcon, uvcon my file name without extension. So the file name here was app.py without extension colon the app name I have specified here. I'll write it as app and hyphen hyphen reload. As you can see, our server is being started at port number 8000 at localhost. Now here we can see that we got our response, which we, which we had already written. So what this code does is whenever we get at the root page, we get a JSON response. If we see, we are getting a JSON response and we never wrote a single line of code for JSON. So this is the beauty of fast API. It returns response in JSON format without writing a single line of code. Similarly, we'll write one more API, which will be same as get. So this time we'll use query parameters. So let's see what are query parameters. Okay. So as you can see, I have written one more API with a query parameter. So what the query parameter does is we go and check. I have expecting something here. Okay. If I write my name. So you can see the response. Hello, Vibhav and welcome to this API. So what it does is if you have a query parameter, it triggers that endpoint, which has a query in it. Whereas if there is no query, then it hits a different endpoint. See APIs are nothing but how applications interact with each other. So in the get method, what we try to do is get some response from a server. 
So we saw that whenever we went to our root page or landing page, we got our response as a hello world. But whereas in post method, it is designed to send data to a server from a specified source. Now let's talk something about Swagger UI. So if you guys have worked or used Postman, we have to set it up for each and every API method for our testing. And also from Postman side, there is no visibility about number of API methods that are exposed from the REST API until and unless we check our code manually. So there was this need to automate this process and Swagger UI does the same thing for us. It's an open source API documentation framework. Swagger UI offers HTML view of API with JSON support so that we can directly test our API. Now let's see how can we do in case of fast APIs. If we go and type in a URL docs, as you can see, we got a Swagger UI. This UI is nothing but a Swagger UI and it is made completely of HTML. Now, if we try to see our endpoints, okay, these are my endpoints. As you can see how I'm getting this response. And now we'll try this one more time. As you can see, the procedure is you have to click the tryout. As you can see, we are getting a JSON array as a response. So guys, always remember whenever we get a curly braces response, it is a JSON object. Whenever we get a square braces response, it's an JSON array. Similarly, we'll try to do the same thing for another endpoint. As you can see, I'll get hello world and this is my landing endpoint. So this UI is nothing but my swagger UI. And now we are going to create a important endpoint where a model will predict the output based on input given by the user. As we can see here that we are sending data on a server to predict something or to store somewhere. So it should be a post request. Now to predict the output, we should store this data somewhere, right? And for this, we'll be using a Pydantic model. So Pydantic is a useful library for data passing and not validation. In other words, Pydantic guarantees the output model, but not the input data. It provides useful friendly errors, allowing you to catch any invalid data. And guys, it is also well documented. If we get stuck, we can go and refer to it. Now let's create a model. Now for creating a model, I'll make a se separate file known as models.py. And here I'll be importing Pydantic, but from Pydantic, I'll be importing base model. As you can see, I have imported the base model. Now to store this data, we'll create a class. I'll name this class as women because that data is for women only and it extends base model. Now, if we go back, I have to store this features to get the output, right? So I'll just store them. So the general way to store values in Pydantic model is to write the variable name, colon and data type for that. It's that easy. Similarly, I'll do the same for the rest. As you can see, I've made this class for women, which extends base model, which is of Pydantic. And it has eight independent features that were there in our problem statement. Now let's go to our app. Now we'll import our model. For importing, we knew that we had created a pickle file, right? So I'll import pickle for that first. After importing pickle, I showed you how to convert that pickle file back to our model. So I'll just convert it. So the way for converting back was pickle.load. I'll open that file in read byte mode and I'll store in model. I have created a model too. Now let's create a post API. So whenever the user goes on predict with a post request, our model should give him the output. I've created this model and now I'll import it in app.py. Now what user will post would be the attributes of this woman, right? So I'll pass that as a parameter, which is of type, my request is of type woman. And for now, I'll just pass it. Pass means do nothing. And let's see, as you can see our post API is created. And as you can see, as you can see, we got all the attributes that woman class contained. Okay, it won't do anything right now. We'll just try. Because we have not written anything for that. 
as you can see it does nothing null now let's see what we are going to do with this function see whatever values we give to our server we have to store it somewhere right we have already made a model for that and this is a model now this request this request is of type women and whatever values we give on a server are stored in it now if we write request i'll just remove this pass as you can see we have all the features of women that we described in a model and now i'll store pregnancy from request and store it in one of the variable now i'll do same for those rest seven independent features and store it in separate variables now you can see that i have done for all those remaining seven independent features i took from request and stored in one of the variable now before moving forward i would like to show something now i'll just open a new jupyter notebook i'll call it as test now what i'm going to do is convert the pickle file into a model so i'll write code for that model so before that i have to import pickle so what this code does is converts my pickle file back to my model and now i'll execute this as you can see our model is created now let's predict an output from some specific values okay so model dot predict as you can see we are getting the functions of model i'll pass some specific values 2 for pregnancy then 150 for glucose for blood pressure i'll pass it as 100 then for skin thickness i'll pass it as 23 then for insulin level i'll pass it as 125 then bmi as 28 then diabetes pedigree function i'll pass it as 1 and age suppose 42 okay now let's see what our model predicts as you can see our model is predicting one that means a woman having this features respectively will have diabetes now there is one more function in model which is called as predict probab now let's see what it does i'm going to pass same values in predict probab function and execute it now you can see i'm getting a two dimensional array and now i'll store it in one of our variable and see what is at zeroth position now zeroth position gives probability of class 0 and for class 1 okay now if i want the probability for class 1 now what i'll write from a i want zeroth array and from that i want whatever value whatever value is present at first index as you can see we are getting this similarly we are going to use this concept in a app now one thing you have noticed here i am passing it as a form of list i am passing all this values that i have got in a form of list similarly what i'll do is convert all this values in a form of list now you can see i have converted all this values all those independent features in the form of list and calling it as feature now i want to predict okay and now let's return the prediction i'll just save it and go back to our swagger ui i'll refresh then i'll hit the post route now i have filled the values that we discussed in our jupyter notebook and now i'll hit execute as you can see we got the same output that we got in our jupyter notebook that is 1 okay and what i'll do is now what i'll do is return the probability 2 now i have told my model to predict probability 2 so see as i discussed before from probability we are getting the first array and from there we are getting the first element or the element that is there on the first index i'll just save it and go back to a uh, swagger ui now what i'll do is enter the same values that we entered in jupyter notebook and i'll hit execute as you can see we are getting the response in a json array format and also this time we are getting the probability that we got before see the probability for class 1 and now i have written a simple if else statement saying that if a model predicts positive then what is the probability of saying that 
similarly if a model predicts you a negative then what is the probability of saying that you are negative now let's try this in our swagger ui i'll keep the same values that we tested in our jupyter notebook as we can see that we are getting a response in a json object format where you have been tested positive with this probability okay if i just we can turn my values if i write 250 let's see what we get you are getting you have been tested positive with 72 so as you can see we are the chances of getting positive have increased if i just decrease this now i have changed my values as you can see now our model has predicted as negative with 0.52 as probability so this was it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed watching this video If you guys have any query do let us know down below. Please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to this channel. I'll see you all in the next video. Till then bye bye.